been reorganizing the books for the ministry here the last uh, couple of days. More on that in the future. Uh, some big announcements coming up. But I uh, found this book somebody had sent to me. It is the Calvin's New Testament Commentaries. John Calvin, in other words, the founder of the nutty thing of um, the philosophy of Calvinism. But uh, flipping through it here, and I found a very interesting quote by John Calvin on the Godhead issue. And specifically in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, he says here, and I'll show you the page after I'm done reading it, um, For in him dwelleth, dealing with that passage of the verse, or part of that verse, he says, here is the reason why those elements of the world which are taught by men do not accord with Christ. They are additions to supply a deficiency, as they say. People adding to the scriptures because the scriptures don't teach what they're trying to get across. Uh, <coughs> Trinitarians, <coughs> excuse me. But in Christ is a perfection to which nothing can be added. If God wanted to be called a trinity, he would have put it in his book. In other words, hence everything that men add of themselves attacks Christ's nature. Does the Trinity attack Christ's nature? Yeah, absolutely it does. Because it charges him with imperfection. This argument alone will suffice for ref refuting all the inventions of the papists. Amen. <laughs> for what is their real purpose but to perfect what was commenced by Christ? Now this insult to Christ is by no means to be endured. They plead it is true that they add nothing to Christ inasmuch as what they have woven into the gospel it is, as it were, a part of Christianity. But they cannot escape by such a quibble. For Paul does not speak of an imaginary Christ, but of a Christ preached who has revealed himself by sure doctrine. Think about that. Paul's not saying, you know, there's some things about Jesus that I don't quite understand yet or whatever it'll be kind of revealed in the second century to tertullian and and then it'll be kind of perfected over the paul's preaching jesus christ it's finished you don't need to add anything to this book let's continue further when he says that the fullness of the godhead dwells in christ he means means simply that the whole god is found in him so that he who is not satisfied with Christ alone desires something better and more excellent than God. Yeah, three different persons. No, no, just one. Just one. The sum is that God has manifested, manifested himself to us fully and perfectly in Christ. The Father has manifested himself to us in Christ, in other words. There's no separate person called the Father. Interpreters explain variously the adverb bodily. I do not doubt that it is employed imprecisely for substantially, for he places the manifestation of God which we have in Christ over against all others that have ever been made. For God, himself, for God has often exhibited himself to men, but only in part. In Christ, however, he communicates himself to us wholly. He has also manifested himself otherwise, but in figures or by power and grace. In Christ, however, he has appeared to us essentially. Thus the statement of John holds good, he that hath seen the the Son, or he that hath the Son hath the Father also, 1 John 2 23. For those who possess Christ have God truly present and enjoy him wholly. Hmm. Show you the, the two quotes here. Get this little bookmark out so it doesn't fall out. Down there. Bottom paragraph. And then up here. You can pause it and read it. The top two paragraphs. Okay, hopefully you can see that. But I found that interesting. Now, I don't study John Calvin's material much because it's just a lot of philosophical junk. Um, I don't. I think John Calvin's in hell, to be very honest. But uh, I've seen this thing. I was talking to Brother uh, Jacob Thompson about this as he's studying this the Trinitarian side of of you know how they try to defend their pagan philosophy of this Trinity concept of three separate gods, three separate persons, but they're only one God, but they're three separate and all this stuff. <laughs> and he said a lot of times some of the best arguments actually come for the Godhead, actually come from the Trinitarians. And Calvin could be a Trinitarian. I have no idea. But the fact is what he says there really kicks the Trinity concept, kicks it hard. 
You see what's going on there. King James Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Now look at this, verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. You understand? For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Calvin comes out with a, a lot of stupid philosophies and things of, of predestination, pre-election, and all this other stuff, limited atonement, unconditional election, the tulip thing, total depravity, all that stuff. He comes up with a bunch of dumb things, and like I said, he might defend the Trinity elsewhere, but in what he wrote there, he wrote perfectly true about what Jesus Christ is. If you want something more than Jesus Christ, if you want something, if you have to add to the Scriptures and say, well, uh, it's the Trinity. The Godhead is called the Trinity, more perfectly called the Trinity. You're adding to the Scriptures. Okay, you are taking something that comes from pagan philosophers, the whole concept of the Trinity thing there. Again, I've showed that in the Catechism. They literally say in the Catechism that they borrowed things from philosophy, divine essence, uh, the whole Trinity thing. Um, they have to add to it. They're adding to who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ that was preached by Paul. There's no, well, Paul preached him, but we have a better understanding of who Jesus Christ is now. Because we have Trinitarian, you know, words that came out in the second century. So we have, we're superior to Paul, to what Paul had in the New Testament, or Peter, or John, any of them. Uh, we have a better understanding about the, who the, the Godhead is and whatever else. No, no, I don't think so. So, is, is John Calvin a Trinitarian elsewhere? I have no idea. I'm not going to waste my time studying the guy's stuff. I mean, this is the only commentary I have. It was given to me, sent to me by a viewer, and I'm thankful for it. But uh, I'm not going to go out and buy his commentaries. I have no time to read a dumb philosopher like him. But uh, if he's a Trinitarian elsewhere, then uh, the Lord took him in his own craftiness in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. I find that interesting. And like I said... A lot of times Trinitarians will actually speak the truth, not even realizing that they're destroying their own system by what they're saying. Uh, you'll get some good arguments sometimes for the Godhead and against the Trinity from Trinitarians. <laughs> they just contradict themselves like crazy. So just thought I'd read that. Uh, pretty interesting. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.